Hello, everybody, and welcome to Paranormal Nation Radio, Not So Normal. How's Denise and Ron doing this evening? We are very good. Um, Hi, Nigel. Hey, Nigel. Nice that Nigel is already ready. So, so, and everybody, let us know if you can't hear us for any reason. We're doing this off of our cell, my cell phone this time, um, because the last time I was doing it on my on my computer, my computer was slow. My mouth wasn't uh, matching up to what I was flipping. what I was saying. Now you can't see me, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, it still works. You can do everything off of a phone on StreamYard, so everything works out real good. But hopefully, everybody in the chat room that listens to this now or later had a fantastic, safe Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Yep, Thanksgiving was very nice. It was nice to see the family and hang out with Mr. Nolan. We got to hang out with him for three days, four days. Oh, and wow. well, mommy had to work and daddy had, and daddy had to go to see family. His dad's got dementia. So oh. so they took Piper and so he took Piper and went to vegas and got to see lacy and and all that so it was it was a nice little break for for piper and uh like i said we got to play with with nolan and got to find out how much we really love him <laughs> and nigel we're all doing good today they're in nice weather down there but it's going to get cool in florida it's already cold up here and we still have some of the snow that we got the other day is still on the ground up here. So, are you supposed to get any more? Not for a few days. Well, that's good. Well, I'm just I'm hoping it don't go by the old saying, you know, the first time you get a snow and you can track a rabbit in it, that's how many snow on the day it falls is how many snows you'll have through the year. We better not have. 25 snows. Hmm. Unless they're <laughs> little bitty ones. Well, you know, last year it seemed like every weekend. I mean, it seemed like we only got snow and stuff on the weekends. Yeah. Last last year. But, you know, this year we were going to go to the beach on Thanksgiving and it was just too chilly. And so we didn't go. But, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, we were babysitting. We're, that too. We were babysitting too. But. Well, you got you got a cold spell from the El Nino going through the southern part of the United States, going across you guys right. right now, all the way across to Jacksonville and out. Yeah, that way. and you know, I'm going to complain. If I have to turn on my heater, I'm going to be really irritated. I didn't know if you had a heater or a furnace in that house. A lot we of don't people in Florida furnace. don't. We, we don't, don't have a furnace. Got a heat pump. Oh, and we well. have with our space heaters. We did bring all of our space heaters with us. Yeah, so we, we're not stupid. But well, I know we've had the electric heaters going in the back room and different places throughout the house over the last few days because they got pretty damn chilly in here. Yeah. Well, like I said, part of the reason we moved is I got tired of the cold and I don't want to have to worry about somebody out driving around in the ice and snow. Yeah. So, yeah. And for everybody out there who been hasn't been catching up, I did find a job. I'm supposed to start on Monday. I hope I get to start on Monday. And uh, I'm excited about this new change. So me being let go from my job did not was not a detriment at all. Um, I hope anybody else that's going through that, that they get as good a luck as I got. And uh, that's that's what's going on here. Hopefully I'm starting on Monday. My Apparently my criminal background check has taken a while. <laughs> I don't know why. And, and honestly, I don't care. I know, I know I'm going to pass it. But I, got, I did get us a guest tonight. And he's a friend of ours. We've met him for lunch one day while we were here. But he was on the show er, back in January on the Paranormal Pride. And he is with Panhandle Paranormal of Pensacola. And 
he is he is an amazing person. I think you, everybody will will enjoy him. And you may notice that he looks like somebody from our childhood. So I'd like to welcome Rob Booth to the show. Hello, everybody. Hello, Rob. You didn't say ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, I interviewed Rob back in January when we were thinking about moving to this area. And I had reached out to him and a couple other teams to to get to know who my cohorts here might be. And Rob is one of those cohorts. <laughs> so welcome, Rob. so what's been going on with with Rob in the paranormal re recently? Well, we haven't done any major investigations in the last few months. The last one we did was uh, a house. It was 1890 downtown, and uh, we took a medium with us, and uh, we sat and watched him converse with the butler and the maid. But we didn't find that much in the house, but it was friggin' 150 degrees in there, so. Must have been in August. Yeah. So all we've done since then is a few house cleansings for people. I get phone calls every now and then. It says, hey, I've got my lights are coming on and off and I got scratched and this and that. And I'm freaking out. And the husband's all upset. Can you help me? Hmm. We'll go over there and find out who's in the house. Let them know that they can't be there anymore and mm -hmm. we'll sage the house and then bless it and throw them out and, and how often do they come back after you've done that has that happened I've never had one come back have you ever had to go back to a house that people had they called you said hey we're having this problem you come in you clear it and Somebody else calls you that lives in that same house later on that's having a problem. Have you ever had that happen? No, I did have a, a house one time. We went and threw out the former owner of the house. He died at the house and uh, his wife sold the house. And when we talked to him, he was very vocal on the digital recorder and told us that it's his house and everybody get out. And I just said, well, let me explain something to you. You died and uh, your wife has moved on. She sold the house and moved over there where your daughter lives. And you've got to go. These nice people bought this house and uh, went through the house. I didn't realize when we went through the house that they had closed circuit TV in every room. Hmm. They could watch every room on their cell phone because they had a bunch of little kids. <clears throat> So the, the couple had gone next door and were watching it on their cell phone. And when we got through with the house, I walked back in the living room and he calls me on the phone and goes, he's gone. I said, what do you mean? He goes, we heard over the, the speaker in the, in the kitchen. Goodbye. And he slammed the door. Hmm. Wow. And they didn't have any activity was, after that. yeah that was excellent yeah. confirmation we looked at each other like wow that was easy enough <laughs> so Just needed to explain why you, know, you need to get out that's it well, that's what we do we try to find out right. what the, who they are and why they're there and just tell them, you know, you need to find some relatives or something to go hang out with, or you need to, you need to cross over, you need to do something, but you can't stay here. Yeah, we've done that. You know, basically go to the people who love you. Mm -hmm. Is you know, in short, that's that's what I will tell them. Hey, go go to the people who love you because they're going to know what what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise it's it's a waste of your time. I mean, not your time, but it's the waste of the spirits. Well, I time. think a lot of it, I've done this for a long time, and I think a lot of it, the ones that hang out, they died 
quickly. Right. You know, like have a heart attack and drop. So there's no one there immediately to escort them versus somebody dies in a hospital bed and the relatives know, you know, they come for them. Mm -hmm. I've seen several cases of that and I'm kind of open to tell people who's going to be in the house, who's coming after who. Uh -huh. And I don't know if it's a curse or what, but what is all that clicking? Not me. I'm sitting no, in a corner. No, I'm on my end. I'll shut my mic off. Oh, I was just making sure that it wasn't yeah, something. It sounded like somebody typing, taking dictation or something. To be honest, it sounds like Farah <laughs> on her computer when yeah. I had her on. So, but, okay, so you said the in the pre-show, you said that you guys had a couple of clearings lately or cleansings that went a little awry. Yeah, well, over Thanksgiving, we had two things happen that was very odd. Uh, my mother-in-law died here at my house. She lived in England. And uh, from time to time, I see her. And uh, my wife can't see the shadow people at all. But I'll tell her, I said, you know, your mother's back. How do you know? I said, the alarm went off on the stove. And she comes screaming through the end of the kitchen. and. The alarm was turned off. And uh, she'll knock at the table on a wooden table if she's there, if you ask her to. But uh, Thanksgiving, my wife's over there cooking. And she turned to me and says, you know, my mom's probably going to show up because she loved it when everybody got together for a big meal. And there's a little knife drawer beside the stove. And the drawer opens up about six inches. So Sarah didn't think nothing of it. She pushes the drawer shut, kept on cooking. Then the drawer opens again. So she pushes it back in and she's beating the crap out of the cabinet, trying to make the drawer open, debunk it, and it, nothing would make it open. So she goes on about it, and then my daughter walks up. And she did something stirring a pot or looking in the oven, and the drawer opened. And she's running into the other room. She goes, Now that's freaky. <laughs> <laughs> and it never did it again. So, so you think she'll be back at Christmas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then we had, I had a cousin call me today and said the weirdest thing happened to them on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, their grandson is a guest of the state of Alabama. Oh. So they have his pickup truck and it had a trailer hooked to it in their backyard. And it was kind of pointed towards the towards their bedroom. So they get good to sleep in bed and the truck starts up, the lights come on, the truck revs up. So her husband gets up, goes outside. The truck shuts off and the door's locked. Mm -hmm. So he comes in the house. He goes, where's the keys to that truck? So she dug in her purse and got her set out. She said, yours is over there hanging on the wall. And he says, somebody's messing with us. So they got back in the bed. Just a few minutes later, the truck started again. And he immediately jumped up and ran out there and looked it all over. And the truck shut off and the door locked. He come back in. He goes, damn ghost. <laughs> so so who do you suspect that that ghost is? No idea. But their house sits on a, there was a, a road they used, the Confederate forces used more or less a, a muddy track that went across their property. So there's no telling who's out there. Mm. That and you were talking weird. about 
It is. Weird. Yeah, I was gonna say they didn't, they didn't even have trucks. That sounds like the movie now. Christine. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it didn't start up and drive across Move. the yard. Yeah. Yeah. So she said my husband pulled it around front, and he took the coal wire off. <laughs> I said, well, it'll still start on seven cylinders, you know, unless you pull them all off. Yeah. Well, pull the battery out of it and it shouldn't yeah. start. If it does. Yeah, you got a real problem. Hold it, the boy in, that's down there and you yeah, have a clutter. are selling those. your truck. Yeah. Oh, they know he's going to sell it because he's going to be a guest for numerous years. Oh. Okay. Well, you know, mm. there that that seems to be a problem for a lot of people. Yeah, yep. it is. So, um, when we talked talked the last time, not not personally, but on the show, you were telling us about some other locations around here, and then you'd sent me a message about a place a couple hours from here. Uh, is it Mariana? Yes. Is it the new town? What What is with that town? Because Cat Hobson also said something about that to me about yeah. Mariana. Mariana has per capita more plantation houses than any house than any town in the nation. <clears throat> a lot of history there, and uh, I've got to get back with the girl there. She promised me the keys to this mansion. This plantation house that they they just took over but they haven't done any renovation on it yet but uh it's very haunted the uh, tourist information place is haunted uh there's a group out of panama city does tours and ghost hunts inside the caverns and uh the bellamy bridge is pretty impressive it's the remains of an old bridge and uh the spirits out there. We we've, we've gone out there and heard uh, Indian drums. You know, with your with your naked ear, just hear, hearing Indian drums. So ain't no telling what all is out there. Yeah, I I knew. I mean, you had sent me this one house, and of course I can't look because we're using my cell phone right now. <laughs> but it looked like a really interesting area when i was looking at all the different things because i mean if you just put in haunted mariana florida you get about 30 places i think it is what i saw oh, yeah. is is that about right yeah the whole place is haunted. and so uh check it out i'll be checking that out a lot more because my daughter settled in there now oh that's good yeah they got a nice house there and she's got a job she is the purchasing agent for jackson county so 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 we have a jackson county too okay <laughs> okay so now the question is is what state doesn't have a jackson county <laughs> good question i think every state has a jackson yeah, county. i would say if any it's one of those uh northern ones vermont new yeah. hampshire yeah, Hawaii. Probably went. somewhere out there, yeah, on the East Coast. A lot of them probably don't. Well, what? Rhode Island is the size of England Air Force Base, the whole state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is just south of here. Well, south, southeast of here. So, um, and you were stationed there, weren't you? Yeah, I've been stationed there. I was there for a little over a year. Yeah, Ron was. If Ron would have accepted, have there. accepted this other tour, he would have been down there. Instead of meeting me, he'd have been swimming with the sharks. Yep. So it's changed down there a lot since the last time we had been. We just went down there, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Or Back down, you know, down through. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we went down through there on the uh, 10th, and 
the way that they've routed everything is so different than it was the very first time we went down there, which would have been about almost 20 years ago. And I know you've probably seen it change even more than, you know, for us, it was a, it was not a mild change. It was a major change from 20 years ago to two weeks ago. Well, just look at nine mile road. Now they throw up 20 apartment complexes in a year. You don't even know that place now. You know, the only thing I knew on Nine Mile was a Whataburger and a bank. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I knew because that's where where we went when we put through here. There wasn't much there. So Mm -hmm. it was lots of road construction when we were there four years ago. So we haven't even been on Nine Mile since since we moved here. Yeah, Navy Federal is... uh, they brought in so many people. They're just trying to build apartments and houses. And right, if you got five acres, they're knocking at your door saying, "I'll buy it." To put little subdivisions in. Yeah, we looked at some houses on the exit where Navy Federal campus is. Yeah, and it was so congested at the time. It was like, well, this one's out. And oh, we knew it was going to get worse too. Yeah, we knew it was going to yeah, be unless you worked there. Better. That wasn't no point in even looking. After the Sprint campus in Kansas City and seeing how that changed the mm-hmm. entire area, we knew yeah. we weren't doing that again. We knew it. So, but it is strange when you see how much it's changed just in the last five years. Um, in, oh, in their area. And then they tore down what? They moved everything from Baptist to a new location. And what are yeah. they doing with that? They're going to tear down the whole hospital. They don't know what they're going to do yet, but I think they're going to put some uh, low-income housing in there again. Mm. I I saw an article where this lady was complaining about the fact that that's where she went for all of her doctors and and everything was right there. And she was upset that it was going to be that much further for her to go (coughs) to the New Baptist campus. And and I know I'm supposed to have I'm supposed to have surgery at Baptist um, at the beginning of the year, so it'll be well, the, interesting anyway. The new hospital is fantastic. I uh, I spent two days last week in the hospital, and uh, the rooms are the size of two regular hospital rooms, and they're very very posh. Oh well, that's and, good. Floor to ceiling windows on the ninth floor, you get a view of everything. The only Grand Hotel, right? Yeah. The only thing, oh, you just get to see that school across the street. But uh, the only thing that's that's bad there is the food. Well, that that's inevitable. They said we changed companies. I said, yeah, but you brought the same damn people back. He just what to wear. <laughs> so who do they use? Do they use Aramark or do you know? No, I yeah, I always had that issue is, you know, the best things that they had were the things that came pre-done. Yeah. So, Hello, Greg. Hey, hey Greg, Greg, how are you? I hope you're doing well and I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. But um, we did. We were driving by. When we went, okay, we've been to Pensacola a bunch of times now. We Every time we drive by the Grand Hotel, first off, we think of you. And second of all, it is so strange seeing this high-rise hotel with the curtains all open and knowing that every room is empty. It's ridiculous. But an 80 <laughs> something hotel. And she's rich. She don't care. What's going on with that hotel? She bought it and nothing? No, she's had it. And then one of the hurricanes flooded part of it and messed up the carpets and and all. And they redid a lot of it in there. Made a little coffee shop and different things. And then they locked the door. She's trying to pawn it on some of the large chains. Yeah. I guess too much money for it. Uh-huh. It's. I mean, you've got the the train station right there next to it. 
Yeah, it's, it's a, part of it. That's, I mean, I know that they don't use that for trains anymore, do they? No. No. So, uh, there's another train station down on 14th Avenue. And that's the one they use. Well, but they, leased, they leased it out to some company because the train quit coming through here after Hurricane Ivan 18 years ago. But they're trying to get the train back through here. It, it's strange how everybody marks time here by Hurricane Ivan. Yeah. I mean, we were here. It, it just yeah. devastated the town. I know. It was the first time we came was the summer after Ivan was when we came here. So, so that would have been about 17, 18 years ago when we first came here. And, you know, like I've said this on the show before, that we can look outside and all of our trees are bent over and there everybody keeps saying, well, that's from Hurricane Ivan. You know, so is it? I don't know. But if everybody says it, it has to be true. Mm -hmm. Well, Ivan destroyed 5000 houses. And when I walked out first daylight after the storm. You know, it hit overnight. They all do. And uh, as soon as I walked out and looked around, there wasn't any leaves on any trees. Right. It looked like a bomb had gone off. You know, just everybody's stuff everywhere. And leaves, everything's covered in two or three inches in leaves. It was, it was quite the mess. Yeah, I remember we were out on... Uh on a dolphin dolphin cruise um when we were here and on a bunch of hotels there were boards still up that said go away ivan yeah and there's others with boards saying screw you state farm <laughs> yeah uh yeah, yeah so <clears throat> they were they were stupid we had one house we were dealing with uh it had aluminum siding on it huh. and uh, it took three foot of water in the house. And so they had mold growing on the plywood. When we took all the sheetrock and insulation out, there was mold on the plywood. And we told the insurance adjuster, we have to pull all this siding off and change the plywood. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. You can't get that siding anymore. He says, so I'd like you to change the plywood from the inside. Oh, no. I said, do what? I'm supposed to take a wall down and leave this aluminum hanging. I said, you're yeah. an idiot. I said, what's your background? Is it construction? He goes, no, I, I'm a car. I deal with automobile adjusting. He said, but because of Ivan, they pulled everybody else in and made wow. us your adjusters yeah that's ridiculous well that's not even the worst of the stories that i've heard from hurricane cleanup here so um because i worked on hurricane cleanup for for hurricane ivan through sprint at the time which would have been probably most everybody's local telephone company back in the day mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, I worked on all the hurricane cleanups and some of the stories that I heard from people were just ridiculous. Um, the things that insurance companies wanted people to do, um, things that coming from a place where we get tornadoes, you know, we used to get tornado, we got tornadoes back in Kansas and it just made me shake my head because, you know, we don't usually get the flooding issues from a tornado yeah and but you still get the water and you still get the, the mold and stuff from it but no it it's ridiculous and then here you've also got the issue with fly-by-night contractors mm -hmm. that we show up with that. and then when you do find a contractor that's local they don't show up right we found out that FEMA stands for 
find every available Mexican. Because <laughs> they bust them in here. Wow. And uh, they didn't speak English. And then they, they come around telling me, oh, you need to go to the college. They're doing a crash course on conversational Spanish. I said, no. Yeah. I just no, don't. it could be another way. Yeah. English said, is a second language is down there, too, is what I'd have I said. said we just we just don't hire them. I said, there's plenty of people need work right now. That their their jobs you can't get into. So it worked out like the day after the, the hurricane hit. I was hiring people right and left. I bet you I kind of have to jump on it. Take your truck, take a chainsaw, take so and so with you, and, and start on this road here. And we're gonna clear these main roads, cut the logs, drag them out of the way. Go to the next street. So it only took the kids about four hours to clear every street in the neighborhood. How many hurricanes have you been through in oh. in our in this area? God. Well, I was gone for twenty one years. Right. So I think about four as a kid. And since I've been back, we've had six. Well, that's not horrible in, no, in your lifetime. And with 20 years being gone, it's still not horrible. No, and uh, a lot of the hurricanes were not that bad. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, the, the one, the one we had this year was nothing for us, but for the other part of Florida at the at the crook there, mm -hmm. Cedar Key was horrible. But for us, it was just some surf weather. Yeah, Hurricane Michael, we did all the battening down and on, and it turns around, goes through Panama City, and just destroyed that Air Force base. Oh, I know. Tinker was torn up. It was, it was odd because when you went up 77, the hurricane went up one side of Highway 77. Oh wow! The on the other side weren't touched, which was I thought that was really weird. That sounds like tornadoes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's how tornadoes are. It goes down the street and wipes out this house, this house, this house, but yet these other houses are all fine. Yeah, but and, and for <laughs> those of you listening, Tinker is is the Mexico Beach area uh, that. You would have heard Mexico Beach on the news uh, a lot more than you would have heard about the Air Force Base. Do you know if they've rebuilt that Air Force Base yet? They're they're working on it. You know the I, jets are back and everything is is working now. Yeah. They build as fast as they can. Mexico Beach rebuilt. You can't see any hurricane damage down there now. Oh, that's good because I know some people are still. Mm -hmm. uh, getting cleanup from Hurricane Sally here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, down by you in, in Pensacola. And uh, Ooh, 13 trees down on the property. So how bad was Hurricane Sally for you personally where you live? It was fairly bad. We we lost we lost a lot of trees. But uh we didn't lose any house or anything like that. I built this house. It don't go nowhere. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Because, you know, I worry about you. That's why I check on you so much. But Everybody um, else can hear in a hurricane. I, you know what? I would I would like to live the rest of my life without experiencing a, hur a hurricane. You know. Well, with a lot of people, don't, every time they have a hurricane, they jump in the car and run up to Birmingham. Is that good or bad? It depends. You know, after Ivan and Dennis come along shortly thereafter, and Sarah said, I can't stay here through another one. So uh, we evacuated. We loaded up the motorhome and we went over the other side of Tallahassee. And damned if the storm didn't turn and come through there. Wow. Yep. So now, so now you just go north, right? We don't go anywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back yeah, 
Yeah, we lucked out to be in a non-evacuation zone, a non-flood zone. And I think we're also in a area that doesn't seem to get uh, fires. Because mm -hmm. I know we were driving down along 10 and you can see where a bunch of uh, wildfires have gone through. Yep. And and I know that that's a, something that happens a lot here is wildfires. <coughs> so. What's the name of that point? I can't even think now. Where the Mid Bay Bridge is. Oh, Tiger Point? No, Garson Point. Oh, Garson Point, yeah. Is okay. that how it says here? Because I didn't know if it was Garcon, but yeah. Yeah, it catches fire every year down there. I don't know how. It's swampy as hell. How in the hell can it catch fire? Grass. So people drive by, flip that cigarette out the window, and that swamp grass takes off. It's just so irresponsible. But yeah, we live, the exit that you would take to get to us would be that you could take that exit to get here. Yeah. But we usually take Avalon. Yeah. So I guess you can get there from Avalon too, since the road kind of goes crooked. But yeah. So. So if you wanted to go on a paranormal investigation today, today, where would you go today? Today, I think I'd go over to Mobile and stay at that one hotel they've got. I can't even think of the name of it now. I've got to get it written down. It's, uh, it has some tunnels for the, uh, what do they call it? The, the uh, Underground Railroad? Underground Railroad. Yeah, the tunnels go down to the river from the hotel and they give you access. Mm. Now that would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, we've stayed at, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Jefferson Davis's presidential home in Biloxi. Oh, okay. And you can go there and rent the cottage that he wrote his memoirs and died in. You rent the cottage for 125 a night. Oh, wow. Is, is, it, is it haunted? I mean, what kind of haunting stuff happens at the Jefferson Davis cottage? You just get the light turning on and off, covers pulled off the bed. Um, quite a bit. We, we put out the uh, cat balls and God, they lit up like crazy. And, uh, the last time I was there, I was sitting on the porch and uh, smoking a pipe, and uh, I smelled a different pipe tobacco. And uh, I said, well, who is here with me? And I turned the digital recorder on, and you could hear, it's me, Jeff. <laughs> and then I got a good picture. You can't get in the mansion at night. But it's all lit up inside, and I got pictures through the window of somebody sitting at a piano. Ah. So it's a pretty cool place. And what they do is they lock the gates at five o'clock. Oh. So you can run of the whole property. Can you can you get out? Yeah, they can. After five o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But nobody else can get in. Nobody Basically. else can get in. Well, that sounds like a fun evening. That would be interesting if you wore a Union soldier's outfit. Oh, uh, you wouldn't want to do that. That's mm -hmm. the, uh, no, you that's want a Confederate the, one. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, place. Wait, is could you imagine cool. what kind of activity you would get? Yeah. <laughs> get you might not be alive morning. in the morning. Uh, yeah, you would. It's the uh, dress up like dress up like Abraham Lincoln and go. You're gonna do that. Well, it's the base home of uh, the Sons of Confederate Veterans. That organization runs out of that. I think they own the own the whole property. A friend of ours is a son of the. I've seen that sign. Well, yeah, you've seen that sign, but we've yeah. also seen that uh, Joe has a tattoo for that. Mm -hmm. So. But um, the only thing we've done in Biloxi so far is 
uh, we checked out two casinos there. Yeah. So, and one of them, I think it was the Scarlet Pearl. Was it one of the ones that was messed up in one of the, in Hurricane Katrina? I have no idea. Oh, Katrina, most of them weren't even there. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had they just were... finished the Hard Rock when Katrina yeah. Because I yeah, remember it, we, we did all the telephone systems for it, and I had to work put, on that. They put them barges up in the middle of the streets. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's Katrina it, was, a, was a... I don't even want to know how... I mean, I know a lot of people died during Hurricane Katrina. I don't even want to know how many died in you know to the east i mean we know that it was a ton in new orleans but i don't know how many died in biloxi and going going east so but, well um, it was a team in biloxi they lost a whole lot of those great big houses that used to sit on the water yep mm -hmm. very few have been put back and they've divided up the property and put smaller houses on it. <laughs> Everything's on slips now. Yeah, I know we had family that had houses in in that area at one time. And I don't know if they still had houses there when Katrina hit. So um Well, I'd like to take a, a, a trip to New Orleans to do ghost hunting in the French Quarter. Oh yeah, we did. We did some walking tours. Well, we did our own walking tour. I researched the yeah. area and I got all the information. And we took our kids and and went around. And our daughters, she went over there and she did the uh, the murder suicide apartment. Yeah, that, that Mary, uh, Bloody Mary, now owns. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had some experiences there and. Lindsay says she's about as sensitive as a rock and uh, both her and her husband had some strange, strange things happen. And in fact, yeah. I'm going to be interviewing um, Mary. She can't do, she's going to have to do a, a taped, we're going to have to tape as opposed to doing live, but I'm going to have bloody Mary on at some point and uh, talk with her. She's, got some truly unusual stories um but i want to go to st louis cemetery number one yep and you can't get in the cemeteries there without a tour guide well we went and and we waited to the tour guides and there's people walked in and we just jumped right in and uh got to see all of it got our poor free tour uh, have you been to Gettysburg? Yes, we have. We we went to uh, Gettysburg in 2017. I don't remember. So, yeah, we um we went in 2017 to Gettysburg, and uh, we're planning on going back, uh, possibly in July next year. We stayed at a place called Battlefield Bed and Breakfast. And it's on part of the battlefield. And uh, the room we chose was a converted, is a room converted out of the barn. And kind of neat because the barn's got a taper that comes up the side to the main floor, which is from the room, you got to go upstairs to the main floor. And we kept hearing walking back and forth up there. Uh, we put closed circuit TV up there, but didn't catch anything on film. And uh, it was it was interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I, I had been a long time ago, like 1977. Yeah, I got pushed. Wasn't there 15 minutes, got pushed. I walked behind one of the big monuments with a guy on a horse, and I was standing in a little depression, and apparently it was occupied. 
<laughs> okay, now you're you're gonna have to be more specific than a statue with a man on a horse. <laughs> well, <laughs> to be no, honest, because there's a there's a hundred of those. I know. Yeah, but the area. It was the biggest one they had, the biggest statue there. And they uh, added a lot. Um, it's a different city. It is. It is. It is strange to be in there. So you got pushed, and you did your did your wife go too? No, I had two other girls from the team, and uh, they both got over there and stood in that hole and got pushed. Oh wow! And we caught one really good picture. The girls took it. We stopped on the side of the highway at the wheat field, where the majority of the Yankees got killed. And uh, they told us that they had been paying the locals uh, three pennies or something for each body they bring out of the field and bury in the road in trenches. Mm. Uh, so the girls took a picture in the field and it's dark, but you can see this guy looks like he's holding onto a cart and there's a lantern on the cart. Oh, wow. It's like he's out there in the field picking up bodies. Hmm. I think after that attack, the Yankees learned to, you know, stay out of stuff to where they'd march out there and, and, and dress uniforms and shoot behind the rocks with a small force and just annihilated thousands of Yankees. Um, the the bed and breakfast that you stayed at was it also haunted? I don't know about the main house, but just uh, where we were at was haunted. I suspect it was, but it was the house was old, but it's the main house was took up very little of it, and then they built so much onto that place. But what was neat is every morning you had a gourmet breakfast and then they would have a guest speaker in uniform come in. Uh, the first day we had a freaking general walk in the door and there's a, a Yankee general standing there with a rifle. And uh, he told us all about how the war was in the town, on how the people reacted because the fighting was all over that town. Yeah. They were fighting in the streets. It was, I mean, it was horrible for a civilian. And then the next day, we had a an enlisted guy come, and he talked about how they lived back then, the people that were in the town, how they lived and got by. And then the third day, the general was back with about 15 guns. And he took everybody outside and he showed us how to load them muskets and fire. Then we had a competition who could load the musket and fire it quickest. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. that would have been interesting. We did yeah. we did something similar to that back in seventy seven. They were showing us how how to load. Of course they didn't give us it was uh Everything was fake because, yeah, because they couldn't give us real bullets as school kids, even back in 77. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, the different experiences that I had in Gettysburg were different from 77 to 2017. The, the two times yeah. I went was totally different. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I, we want to go back. And uh, and experience a lot more stuff there, but we found you don't go on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. Yeah. Well, we. Uh, I think my next trip is going to be up to a, a state park called Tanny Hill outside Birmingham, and they I have the old that. the old ironworks are there. Yeah. And uh, go up there and see if anybody's hanging out around there. Yeah, one of the places that you can't go anymore in Birmingham, at least not to paranormal investigate, is Sloss yeah. Furnace. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got That's everything a... got cleaned up, fixed up, and all nice because of paranormal investigating. And then they said, nope, we're done with that and did this. Done. No more. And uh, like Kat, Kat always says, she's what is, a, it's just a museum now, isn't it? Yep. Just a just a museum. Can you walk in? Yeah. You can still, still, well, you can still. They don't, they charge you to take pictures. They do? Yep. They charge you to take pictures at Sloss Furnace. Uh -huh. So it is what it is. Yeah. So, oh, let's see. So Greg says, I'm thinking General Longstreet was probably the biggest officers, officers wise at Gettysburg and also was his horse. He's talking about the uh I know what statue you're talking about. Yeah, he's talking about the statue. Yeah, that one huge one. So well you guys keep this up. I gotta go get a drink. Right. Yeah. Uh Rob, what is the farthest place you went to investigate at here in the United States or overseas? Uh, it's probably been Gettysburg. Gettysburg? Yeah, it's about as far as I've been to investigate. But we've been, I've been to uh, <coughs> the Stanley Hotel. Where the shining was written. Right. Boy, that place is funky. We got a nice picture there. Yeah, it is. And stuff. So how many people are on your team down there? I think I got six now. Six or seven. Are you now, going are to the Gettysburg Bash this year or next year? I doubt it. A lot of our traveling is conducive to can the grandkids' mother work from home for a, a week for us to be gone? Hmm. But uh, we're going to tell her come June that you, you've got to work from home because we're going to go away for about three weeks. There you go. So let's see. Okay. You're down in the panhandle, what in what part of Pensacola. Florida are you out of? Pensacola? Yep. I can throw a rock into Alabama. Oh, okay. I'm that close to the border. Right. Now I know one of the places right there south of Atlanta and everything when i was driving over the road i went to a place to deliver and they said it'd be a while but they go you can get out in the road right in front of you walk down to the tree line and turn right and walk up the tree line through the pasture and everything and you go up there and there's an old plantation home up there where they filmed gone with the wind cool yeah and everything and uh that was really interesting then the next interesting part of that was coming back got to my truck and because it was a little bitty blacktop road out there i couldn't swing to the left mm -hmm. with my trailer and everything so <clears throat> i swung to the right and i said well i'll just follow it up and find me a place to turn around and i can get back down there Little did I know that going up the blacktop in there, everything started getting really nice mode and everything. And there's get up there and there's this beautiful mansion of a house. It was that Senator Thurman down there used to wear the bow tie all the time. Yeah. And there it was his house. <clears throat> and security came out and stopped me and said what are you doing i said well i delivered down here i gotta find a place to turn around they said no problem go up here turn back up and get out we have trucks up here all the time so that was pretty interesting down there in georgia but like I said you get down into georgia southern georgia 
and everything. There are a yeah. lot, a lot of plantation a lot of, houses. Yeah. So, a yeah. lot of plantation houses in Georgia. Yeah. And the history has got to be there in a lot of them. Where my daughter lives, about six miles from, is a town called Two Egg. Two Egg. Okay. Yeah. So I asked the local, I said, why did why they call it two egg? And he explained that there used to be a little grocery store gas station on the corner there. And uh, the town didn't have a name. Wasn't much of a town. And uh, they would deliver. The, the guy would come once a week and take the grocery order for the delivery. Right. And he'd be in there. This little boy came in and traded two eggs for a little pouch of tobacco for his grandfather. And uh, so for the name of the place, he just put down two eggs. <laughs> and it stuck. Hey, that's, that's the way to make a town name. You know, yeah. it's original and what happened in the town. So. There's a town in Arkansas called Number Nine. Yeah, I wonder how they got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't too far from Paragould. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dogs can bring home to me. Kids? Yeah, we. And speaking of that, we got a lot of celebrities and vendors coming to Paragould, Arkansas. There in July for our Paracon. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, they've increased some more celebrities to come down there. And that's in July. Yeah, that's in July. Okay, well. Yeah. Where, where is Paracon? <clears throat> uh, Town at Paragold is yep. about 40 minutes from Jonesboro. So you take 55 to 555. And it's off of there, so it's north of Memphis, about an hour, about an hour, about an hour north, and back to the yeah. west. Okay, it's a nice little town of twenty-five thousand people. And the month of July, the mayor signed a declaration last year for Santiago Sorello Paranormal Horror Show for the entire month of July from now on. Cool and stuff so last See, year was had, the first year we had it i had a guy i worked with and he was from a little town over on the ozarks south of uh, fort smith and uh he brought his newspaper in from the town and it's about four pages long and he I sat down and read it, and I thought this was it's got to be a junk newspaper, a fake, you know, comedy paper. This can't be real, you know. <laughs> Headlines: Clem and Myrtle has a litter of puppies. You know, do you want? One? You know, so and so had dinner with so and so, and they had fried chicken and this and that. And mm -hmm. I told him, I said, "This, this has got to be a joke." He goes, "No, it's not." No. Nope. So when we went to see him, he rode around and introduced me to all these people. <laughs> it ain't a joke. <laughs> no, it's nope. not. Yeah. Growing up in a small town here south of where I'm at now, the paper would come out once a week. And Mary Jones had so-and-so over for coffee and cake. And so-and-so's mom and dad came in from 20 miles away to have a Sunday dinner. And we yeah, had before was the news back in. <laughs> oh, it's funny. We told him we was going down to the uh, crater of Diamond State Park from there. <laughs> she says, Oh, it's just straight down this highway. She says, it'll only take you about 30 miles, 30 minutes. Yeah, on top of the mountains, all the way down there. Mm -hmm. And a motor took like four hours it's that is one of the few places where you can actually take your kids and actually dig up diamonds yeah it was fun oh yeah we we want to go down there there and also to mina we want to go to mina arkansas 
right. to go to Crystal Camp. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> we know a friend of ours knows the owners of Crystal Camp. And uh, they did a movie there about uh, aliens and Bigfoot and stuff like well, that. Well, that wasn't the intent. That wasn't the intent. That's just what happened. Yeah. Just what happened. But to have they you, shot a movie and he showed up. Something showed up. It was yeah. they were doing it on base. They were researching the spook lights. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know Joplin is known for the spook lights, and that's where they they live. So they were trying to investigate the different. Um, and other things happen. And other things happen. So it went it went yeah. off course. Hello, Joanne. Mm -hmm. If anybody it's has any questions for Rob, please ask. And uh, we'll get them asked and answered. Right. But yeah, you you've been all over, Rob. You know, much more places than we discussed the you know the last time. Um, where is the most exotic place that you exotic to you? Um, exotic to you that you've investigated. Uh, exotic. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I really can't say. Okay. How about what place would you, would you prefer never to investigate again? Um, we did a hospital over in Lumberton, Mississippi. We were the only paranormal team that had been to that hospital. And it was it was in worse condition than we were allowed uh, led to believe it was you know like all the ceilings on the floor and and it was it was really hard to get around and the, the smoke i mean this dust and the the mold smell and all but we did get some evidence there they caught calliope music by the front desk on hmm. the digital recorder Hmm. So I guess uh, the nurses were having a good old time. Hmm. Well, you know, got got to unwind somehow. Yep. Uh, the funniest thing I ever run into is there was a there's a a hospital in Defuniac Springs that they uh, they sold the hospital and it's going to be apartments. Mm -hmm. And God, I help him help them people that's going to live there because that place is so freaking haunted it's not even funny huh when did when did they sell it and they sold it two years ago because we were the the home team for it and we used to go down and do uh, some public stuff to raise a little money yeah. but uh, that place we had uh we put cat balls all down the wall just a long hallway, about six inches off, about three foot apart. Two of the girls were in the operating room, and they walked out of the operating room, and a cat ball lit up, bounced off the wall, went to the middle of the floor, turned, and went straight at them, just flying. Mm -hmm. And they just freaked and screamed like little girls and run off, and we're just dying laughing watching it on the video screen. <laughs> Wow. How? But it was, uh, that place is, was fun to invest in. Have they tore it down yet? To build the apartments or is it still there? No, they're not going to tear it down. They're going to gut it and make the apartments mm. into it. Sounds similar to what they were doing mm. in Kansas City. And, and that uh, Loma Hospital, Linda. Oh, yeah. Loma Vista. Loma Linda. Loma Linda. Yeah, that one, well, that one hospital down there at 30th and Main, that's what they was doing down there, too. Yeah. Yeah, the old Trinity Lutheran. Yeah, the one we investigated. I'd like to get into Baptist Hospital. Hello, Before Facebook you user. I need so, to talk to them about getting into Baptist Hospital before they tear it down. Well, you do that, let us know. I, I don't will. have any I will have I will be a totally blank slate for that place since I've never been in it. Oh yeah, it's well the old Baptist Hospital over on Twelfth Avenue. 
uh, the ozone pizza places in the basement, and that was the morgue. Um, oh, okay. Oh, wow. Go order. Boy, he gets mad when you like pull out a meter and lay it on the table. <laughs> you got to put that away. Uh huh. Hello so, to Paranormal Connections. Oh, ozone pizza, weren't they? No, that's UFO pizza. There was a UFO pizza at one of the food things that we went to. Mm -hmm. So Have you ever had people tell you, oh, you're a paranormal investigator. So you do UFOs and Bigfoot and, and all of this also, right? Uh, no. No, some do and some don't. Not too right. many. In fact, I was going to ask you the questions, you know, related to. Have you ever investigated any UFO sightings? No. Are you interested no. in that? So so, but unless you just happen to be there when they come, you know, ain't really nothing. Now I did <laughs> I did have a fella call me one day, and he's funny because he's supposed to be a medium. And he gives readings and stuff in one of the stores. And he called me up and he goes, you got to come out of my house. He goes, I have a portal in the yard and I got tiny UFOs around this portal inside of it. No. And, and he goes, I got a little little spaceman thing that, that the cameras picks up. And these orbs just flying all over that side of the house. So we go over there. We watch it on video. Yeah. I to him that well your orbs are your air conditioning system is it's got the heater system on so it's blowing backwards and your orbs is just all the crap that's in your air conditioner blowing out against the light I said that's just that's not an orb it's not and then we went over there I reached up and, and smacked the spider web in front of the camera and I said, well, it takes care of your UFO guy. And I said, let's go over here, the big powerful light and find your portal. So we go over and find this portal. So I reached down, I get a bunch of UFOs in my hands, aliens, and I open it up. And it's a bunch of little tiny spiders. Oh. And Little spiders have about eight eyes. Oh, yeah. So they are, they're bright as hell when you put a bright light on them. I said, here's oh, yeah. your right here. Oh, he got so embarrassed. And I said, if you're a median, you ought to figure this out. You know? Mm -hmm. You should have been able to walk out here and tell, you know, what it is. I said, I've debunked all of it and I ain't been here five minutes. He was so embarrassed because he said, I trained with the, uh, an angel trained me, and then I trained with um, a uh, medicine man and all of this stuff. And uh, Yeah, right. You better get your money back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, right. needless to say, he got out of the, the business of giving readings. Well, yeah, he should. And Facebook user? Which hospital are you talking about that has this? Gary. Is, is that Gary? That could be it could be Pastor Gary. Yeah, I bet it's the one did, yeah, downtown. Did they do it right? Was talk, I was talking about the hospital down there. Yeah. About so, what they're doing with it. Yeah, right. the last thing I had seen about that hospital was that basically they'd fallen off the face of the earth. Basically they'd quit, yeah, building or doing anything to it. Yeah, that's what few apartments and condos they already had built in it. That was it. Yeah. So yes, it's Lutheran. Gary, and yeah, Trinity Lutheran Medical Center. Right. I actually worked for Trinity Lutheran Manor at one time. So it was only for like three days. My the people I was taking care of started dying. I couldn't handle it. I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> So well, good. how long is this show? It's as long as you want it to be. If you want to be done now, we can be done now. If you want, we'll be I'm done at the Huh? I'm good. I'm gonna have to go. I'm getting stink eye. She's wanting oh, me to okay. build a fire. 
Okay, well, okay. Where, where where they can find you, Rob? Uh, we're on Facebook as Panhandle Paranormal of Pensacola. Uh, feel free to send me an IM anytime and uh, keep your room clean and ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, Bye. thank you so much, Rob, for coming on. We appreciate it. And tell your wife, right. thank you for lending you us. Right. Bye-bye. Have Bye -bye. a good evening. See you, Rob. So, Rob's got a lot of stories. You'll probably see him at the parade. He does. He does. Yeah. Very interesting man. And like you said, it's his time of year with the beard and everything going. And Oh, yeah. He's busy. Yeah. So, he'll be at the Christmas parade on the 9th. Well, the uh, boat one's this weekend. Right. This weekend yeah. is we have. So, we personally will be going to the. Milton is having a lighted Christmas boat parade on the Blackwater oh. River. So that's on Friday at dark. And then on Saturday is the regular parade with floats, not on the water. And so we're going to be doing that. And then Rob's parade in downtown Pensacola is the ninth. And I'd like to go to that one. Um, it'd be nice to be able to go to a Christmas parade where I'm not having to bundle up and wear gloves and all this other crap. Oh, yeah. It would be nice to do that. I know. It'd be weird. <laughs> here, here, let's do this. Yeah. I'm going to rub it in. Hey. Rub it in. So that's what I, I hope to do, but more than likely, I'll still have hot hands and gloves anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, a couple, couple of weeks ago, uh, I went down and me and Gary went out to the cemetery. We went live. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah. that on, on, the, uh, on the recordings. Right, right. It was a lot of things down there and everything. But uh, what still amazes me is that unknown Indian grave. Mm-hmm. Flags and flowers and everything around there, which we've caught video of them off the game yeah. cams. Yeah. Of the family's coming out there, a lady coming out there and leaving stuff. So it's still one of those mysteries that who's to say it's an Indian even buried there? Yeah, who's to say anything's there? But is it was how did people find out that there is a, a headstone there for an unknown Indian who's, you know, yeah. How do they find they out? They don't. This, this, it's not listed on find a grave or right. any of that. Did they you get know. it from listening to they, all of us talk about it? It could they have been. Upon it, I don't we think. know, we know one of them lives up the road a couple of miles because they That's drive, a, four told the they drive a four wheeler <laughs> down there. Yeah. And she might have told these other people that are showing up too. She might have. But I mean, well, we had that one video of the entire family climbing out of a minivan. Right. Yeah. The only the only headstone they went to and did anything was, was that? the unknown Indian. Right. I, would, I would like GPR. Ground penetrating radar. Or maybe, you know, drill down with, you know, a small mall drill and a like a colonoscopy camera. <laughs> I've got one. I've got all that. Yeah. I would like to see, you know, dig down. Do, do you get down to a box? Mm -hmm. Do you get down to something? I mean, because if you, you drill down far enough, if you happen to drill through something, you you know what it feels like to drill through something that's. That's solid. Right. We we done you that up, when we when we first took oh, over the cemetery. Good we idea. made a auger bit, one inch auger bit that is uh three foot long. And we would drill down and I had one of the little cameras that I could go down in through there and look. We did that uh mainly over there on the west side of the road in the right. wooded area we mm -hmm. were checking things a couple of times we went down we were down in there about 18 inches and you could see bits of clothing 
Yeah, so but it again, did like prove three that there was something. You know, I, I always wanted to get down where it says one of the cavalry is buried and see a button or a belt buckle. Yeah, but you know what? It's like biopsying Swiss cheese. You got way too many holes and not enough solid stuff. Right. Well, and, we don't drill more than one hole. We just go down right. with one and everything. But yeah, we never done that at the unknown Indian's grave. So, and so, but like Gary said, it's the people that show up to that headstone. They're from all different nationalities. We have right. Hispanic. We have colored folks show up. We have white folks show up. So yeah. why would you have these multi, you know, different people showing up for one headstone? Well, you can't know. see it. You can't read it from the road. No. So I said word of mouth got around somehow. It did. And of course, those ones went out and partied out there. Yeah. Right. right. So, True. I mean, it's it's one of those. And the dowsing rods say there is a body there. But now, we the did have is, one of our real good friends that we she seen through her mind when she was on a show and we was talking about it and said there's a baby buried in there but with, again we with, we don't have any true proof no we don't there is no proof of anything in that what's in that grave there is no record of it why why yeah. So, you know, to be in a little bitty cemetery out in the middle of nowhere that has a lot of one family in it and then relatives of that family in it and a few other people that lived in the area in it. And then just to have this one, you know, who's to say in 1959 there wasn't more headstones and everything in that road that they cut out right but again have the history uh we don't have a written history no we don't we have a possible close to verbal history right but but still that's and like gary posted right there the story he was told by the family that supposedly this Indian came to was kind of strange in itself. Mm. Right? Yeah. Because everybody's, you know, the story, if nobody's heard it, what we've talked about on the shows before and everything, this Indian showed up at this farmhouse and was working with the farmer, we were told, and was on the back of a buckboard riding when the buckboard hit a rock or a bump and it threw him off and his head got stuck in the wheel and broke his neck. Well, if you're on the back and bounce up, you probably bounce out of the wagon. Yeah. Not forward and over the side. Yeah, that's so that story's been kind of strange. Yeah, that's that doesn't make much sense. Because you would think even you know, we're talking the, and what gets me is, okay, if they were using buckboards and wagons, you're looking back in the 1800s, early yeah. 1900s, yeah. right? Yeah. That headstone is a lot newer than that. You know, that headstone's probably from the 50s. Yeah. Yeah, that's and if an if you know, you would think it would have been in a newspaper somewhere. Yeah, I mean, one time I was doing some research on the area, you know, on the people, because uh -huh. you know, we, I was trying to get you guys some. Yeah, that story does some. You know, I try to do something along the lines of find a grave, get you guys some some funding for the for that. And right. while I was researching, I couldn't find 
too much on that. I, I couldn't find anything on that. But the other mm -hmm. families, I definitely did. So, I mean, if somebody buried someone there in the, because it was a family cemetery, correct? Right. So if they buried somebody there, they didn't, don't necessarily have to have a record of it. But I would think that the county would want to know well, how many if it was are before, buried. If it was before 1896, you got to remember, all right. records and documents were burned up in the courthouse. Right. Right. Every and record. I don't think it was. I don't think it was before that. For some I reason. I don't either. I'm thinking 20s. 30s yeah because like i said that headstone and you've seen the headstone mm -hmm. that's, it's just from, that's in the very first days of people getting the uh, mortuaries doing their own little flat headstone kind of deals on marble and who would who would cut in and put unknown indian and is it is it did somebody maybe do that to maybe try to make this graveyard different or maybe to honor all unknown indians that passed it very well could be it's or just a symbol did do somebody we know? do it to cover up something because you gotta remember you're yeah. in a triangle area what i call it right there uh, a, bad thing. a lot yeah. of bad evil whatever you want to call it and everything you got hans mill which is three miles as a crow flies and everything of uh, the massacre over there right of the mormons and then you go re well you go right up the road as you're coming into the cemetery and there's a sign there where a guy was murdered and everything then you go south three miles, and that's where the Dimmel brothers were murdered at and everything recently. So that triangle there is kind of like a Bermuda Triangle type deal. Which what is are they trying like to cover up? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's weird. It is weird. Hmm. And like Gary said, if the wheel is turning, your head is not going to go into right. the wheel. Yeah, that, that story doesn't make any sense, really. No. My theory is if the Indian is true, he was messing around with the farmer's wife and got caught. Or her, their kids or something. Yeah. Yeah. I would say or, that was that I could horse. believe. Stole a horse. You know, you name it. It could have been almost anything. It, if it's true and like i said i i would like more more facts um and you know as much as i enjoy my dowsing rods and things like that i still can't put a whole ton of stock in what they say even though i know that it could be true I still have to have something that coincides with that. Right. You got to have more proof of it. But we do yeah. know, in, in, you know, from using dowsing rods, finding water, electrical, metal, and everything like that. That's yeah. what leads me to believe, yeah, they can find graves, especially newer graves, because you got metal coffins, you know, things like that. But then you look at the old wooden coffins they did have nails right so you're finding metal but you know and i agree gary like i said i i think it's quite possible that the stone is a memorial to to native americans that have passed in the area it could um, be because but, the dowsing rods and different things we've used out there have said there's a lot of indians buried because this is up on a hill. And, and I've stuff. seen and I've seen them, you know, as knowing that I see spirits, I've seen these spirits there. But it doesn't mean that they died there, you know, or that they're buried there. I just know I've seen them. And then you guys have got the hill, the mounds, all those mounds there in the woods that make me go, 
it's very possible that this is uh, a Native American burial site. And it very well could be. But again, we don't we're we're making very good educated guesses is what we're making without digging stuff up without right. without creating a different problem. So I would have loved to have been out there in 1960. See, that's on it. the day the motor grader guy plowed through. Sick and tired of it. I wanted to see what was what he was digging up at that time. So that's where you would have gone if you could go back in time right now. <laughs> yeah, I I would. I would really be, the day go before. back in that time because you'd be the only person other than him. To see actually if there was headstones or anything there. Yep. Yeah. And, there, and, and, and there's no the picture. digger saw up the road down from us too. We had that validation. You know, a lot of Indians around that area. Because you had water, you had Show Creek right there and stuff. You had the prairie grass out there yeah uh, buffalo this was up on top of the hill so. plenty of deer Pl plenty of deer and buffalo yeah. and not to mention geese and ducks all over the damn place yeah. so it would yeah. be a good place not canadian geese there's no deer left <laughs> now after you got done with them carl oh we didn't even we didn't even <laughs> break a dent in them <laughs> and everything i mean when the hunting season up here harvested 190 some thousand deer bucks does you know antler button bucks and all that that doesn't touch the one million that's in this state they say right but yet you go back to 1950 and look up how many deer were in the state of missouri then yeah. Oh. There was less than a hundred. Wow. Is what they report. So they've know, been very little devils, haven't they? Well, yeah. Uh, since 100? the conservation when the conservation got involved in it, wow. I mean you had uh bucks two days out of the season is all you could hunt them. The rest of the time you could hunt does. And they were picky on that. I can remember three day hunts, and that was the season and everything. But uh, yeah, they took it over. I can remember going hunting with Papa, and you'd sit out there, you might see one or two deer, and that was it. Yeah. And nowadays, we go out <coughs> opening weekend, me and Scott are seeing over 100 deer. Now, some of wow. those deer might have been the same deer coming in and out, right. but we were at different farms and locations when we saw them. And yeah. Gary can remember no hunting. I can too. You know, wow. Papa will tell me about Papa told me about the very first deer he killed. He was in a Model A driving down the road, and the headlights at night were shining in the eyes of the deer. He got out with uh, the jack for that Model A yeah. and hit it between the eyes and killed it. Hmm. That was his very first deer. Whole different, whole <laughs> different term of roadkill at the time. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it stays true today. I mean, I lived over north of Chillicothe years ago, and uh, I had been out deer hunting and stuff i was helping a lot of people around the area with deer hunting so in my barn out there there was deer hanging everywhere right ready to be harvested or butchered up and everything so i'm out hunting i come back with a deer go out to the barn to hang it up and i'm counting and i'm going hold it count again i go in the house and my dad's there talking to my wife and stuff at the time and i said we got a problem them deer are multiplying out there and they're dead what's up dad goes well i put one in there 
when he pulled into our driveway, he looked down the road and seen a little one come out and jump the fence. And when it did, it's got its front legs caught in the bob wire when it flipped over. Oh, crap. So it was sitting there hanging. The dad goes down there, right, to check on it, going, well, coyotes are going to eat it. or Yeah. You know, it was a young button buck. I mean, little bitty weighed 65 pounds 70 right pounds. Oh, so it was it was baby veal so what dad do he opened the trunk up and got the jack out and hit it in the head and killed it <laughs> brought it up gutted it and hung it up in the barn for me so yeah i mean those are memories of the deer season and hunting but yeah up here since conservation took it over which this year first year they've done this we had you know we have a regular rifle season in mid-november right right this year they opened up three days in october for <laughs> rifle season at the first wow. part of october i didn't know about it and stuff they did that they opened up different youth hunts for the youth to go out and do it and stuff right now we're in the uh let's see saturday we'll start antlerless season and then we get it done we're back in well we'll be in archery all that time too but archery and then at the end of december we have the alternative which is crossbow black powder if you're brave enough to go out with this avatari thingy that you put a stick in and throw it at yeah. the deer, if you're good enough for that, you can use it during that season. Oh, yeah. I'm not. If and I'm going to do that, I'm going to get a spear and I'm going to stand in a tree stand and throw it down at it. But, but it's always tire iron season. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Very well is, but anyway, but I got two of them in the freezer right now, and I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six tags. You better get and, moving. And two turkey. I got until January the 15th to fill them all. Oh, you want to get it done before it gets too damn cold. Oh, no. They, they, move, they move slower. <laughs> They move Besides slower. That, I, I got to go out. Time. I got to go out tomorrow night and help Scott build our new uh, hunting blind. We're building a miniature cabin on skids to pull out to go deer hunting out of. I'm getting lazy at hunting. I want in a warm place. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why you got to figure out how to move to Florida. No, you guys got deer tiny down here. deer. You guys got little bitty deer down there. I don't know. They look pretty big when they're standing next to them. I don't know. I've seen a bunch of them. Well, I mean, a lot remember, more than I expected. Remember, we live in town. Yeah, we got Bigfoots here down here. Yeah. You know, that's what they like. Is no, deer. No, up here. Yeah. The, what they said. The deer I, I got <laughs> were weighed over 180 pounds. So they were pretty yeah. good size. Well, Monday, my guests are the Haunted Housewives. Good. So I'll be having them on. And then uh, more than likely, I'm I'm not going to have a show the week of Christmas because, well, Christmas is on Monday. Right. And New Year's Eve is on Monday. Or is it New Year's Day? New, One New of the Year's day. day. It doesn't matter. Not going to be having shows on those two days. So, right. you know, everybody, you're going to have to get your Paranormal Pride fix uh, on the 4th and, uh, let's see, the 10th. 4th and 11th. 4th and 11th. And 18th. Possibly. You know, so let's keep that in mind. Um, I've got a couple guests. I've got some uh, special guests coming up after the beginning of the year. I'm going to have James McDaniel back on. He was the media guy for um, Haunted Live. Called himself uh, Patty Patty Mc, Mc, McFatty something. Patty. Really, really fun guy. He is the media person for Reels Network. 
Oh. So he is the media director for that. So if you watch OP Live and all the stuff that's going on on OP Live, when they say, hey, hashtag this, hashtag that, he's the one that's feeding them their questions and stuff. Oh. Um, so I'd like to hear more about, uh, you know, it may not be paranormal. It may not be a paranormal show, but it'll be a fun show. Um, he used to also help out with uh, Joanna Gaines and her husband on some of the shows that they used to be on. So um, he's not on there. They're not on those shows anymore, and he's not a part of that. But it'll be fun to find out what he's been up to since he's moved to Albuquerque and uh, or Albuquerque. And uh, so that'll be fun. I've got Jessica Potter coming back. She's going to visit with us. And you met her a couple places already. So you'll be able to see her. And uh, I'm working, like I said, I'm working on some stuff with Bloody Mary. And and uh, Kat's getting me some names of some people so I can find out more about MUFON here in our area. Or the other, the other group that she was telling me about, which was is a split from MUFON. Right. So, because I really do would like to know more. I'd like to know more about UFOs. I know just as much as they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what? They might even be able to show us how we can find, see one. I'd like to right. see one. At this yeah. point, the only thing I've seen that's in the sky is the International Space Station and some satellites. Starlink, yeah. No, 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 I haven't really. seen Starlink. I have not seen oh, Starlink. I yet. have. They were up in the sky a week ago, about eight or ten of them, and it looked like a trail of a moving star. But you would think down here, you know, a bunch of the hurricane spotters are out of Eglin. So you would think that there would be some places here where you would see them. And we, like I said before, we also had the. Um, the Gulf Breeze incident that mm -hmm. got multiple books written about. I still haven't read the book. Um, I haven't picked it up yet. When did that happen? 19. I thought it was 14 or in the 17. I, I think it was in the it was 2014. No, it was like 1970 something mm -hmm. or 1980 something. I can't remember. That's why I want to read the book so I can find out more. I never heard of it. But if it wasn't at the parent, if we, I hadn't seen it at the paranormal conference, I wouldn't have known. And Kat interviewed the men and the man in black that investigated that. Oh, really? Yeah. So she said she'd get me in contact with him once I read the book and have my questions. Because right now I don't have any questions other than where was it and what did they see? I wow. and the thing is, is those answers are in the book. So. Um, and I think I'm going to try to see if I can get uh, Jeff Mudgett on, talk to him a little bit more. I really like Jeff. He's uh, he's an interesting guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, who knows, you know, what what he can tell me. But and I'm looking for some special guests for our show, this show here. So so that we can well keep learning. That's what it's all about is talking about it. Everybody's got different ways they investigate, different equipment, different things, you know, that they come across. So it's always a learning experience. So, Carl, what is your New Year's resolution going to be? You got some time to think about it because I'm going to ask that last show of the year. going to ask. I'll think about it and see what I got going on yet and yep. everything but uh what are yeah. the plans for the network in the next year have you even thought about that do you think yeah, we should i have them? i'm in my time on the weekends that i'm not hunting or working around <laughs> the house i've been working on setting up our show on ruku okay and everything the Bill of Rights Network and everything will be on there. And what's nice about it, the way I'm setting it up, is we can put all our previous shows 
schedule them during the daytime and everything like that. Yeah. Our live shows will go live on yeah. the Roofy channel too. So that that I'm working on. Do you think we should have uh, I don't want to do anything on New Year's Eve again. I don't want to do no. that. But I'm no. thinking maybe we should do a show with all the hosts. I'm Just, thinking right after the first of the year, I'll pick a night and tell everybody, you know, get all the hosts. I'll give them plenty of heads up time and everything to where we can have everybody on here at one time and do an hour, hour and a half show for everybody in our chat room. And especially the people over there watching us rumbles. Our numbers are popping up over on rumble quite a bit. So all those people will be able to watch and join us. I can't wait to see the questions that the people from Rumble could have if they could actually interact yeah, actually with us. And Gary, right. I'm so glad you have not had any demon activity in the last six weeks. No, we yeah. have So he's been doing pretty good. Good. I'm That's glad good. to hear it. But you know, but I think that it's gonna be good, you know, have a hey, here's here's the plan for 2024, everybody. Let's let's get together and, and talk about it. And you know, I think it'll be good for everybody. And we haven't we haven't done that really since last before year. yeah, before last New Year's Eve. We it was before that that we did um a public mm -hmm show with all the the hosts the hosts and everything on here yeah i'll get with everybody as soon as like I said you get your new computer and we get it set up chris has had issues with his computer so his new one's coming in and everything tammy's getting ready to come back live with her verbal hangover show so because they got moved into their new house and i saw uh, that so, they're doing real good and he got a deer the other day deer hunting and stuff which big shout out to his dog and everything that he he got a bad shot on it he gut shot it and it took off right mm -hmm. so he tracked until he couldn't find blood anymore he went back to the house and got renegade his dog Rennie, and everything this that's dog that's our first name Rennie. yeah this dog yeah. went and tracked all the way around and found this deer a quarter mile from mike's house oh wow so he got the deer that way he had a picture with the dog and everything and i said yeah i'd be giving that dog a good treat oh yeah it's, it was a pit bull and it went right out on the track huh. that's what i told him our mini pit bull I take her out on a leash outside. She sounds like a hog. <laughs> you put her nose to the ground and just smell every damn thing yeah. there is around there. Yeah. People don't think of them as hunting dogs. No. They are. They're, they they've are. got good noses for some things. Well, that's and... what I told Scott. I said, if we get into a situation where we can't find a deer, I'm going home and getting my dog. I'll put her on a leash. I ain't turning her loose because I'd never find her. Oh, but yeah. I'll put her on a leash. She'll lead us. Well, since we're, yeah, we're down got to, to find a place to hunt. Yeah. Well, we're Gary, down. like I said, we could always go to the cemetery, sit on that west side. No kidding. Just sit and wait for them. You sit out there with your crossbow. Yeah. We'll put a blind up. Well, so. I'd say that, you know, let's get this show show off the road now. I mean, we've got, we're about 15 minutes from the end. Right. I don't feel like going much longer right now. But if there's anything you want me to do to set up the 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 show with everybody, let me know. I'll be around. Got we got a little time. We got about at least a month or so. Right. right. So we'll get it set up and pick a night and a time so I can advertise it. And the nice thing about StreamYard, that show I will advertise a week ahead of time and keep resending it in every day. 
that away because if you notice the numbers up there facebook is really cracking down on everybody on facebook's live like this yep they're cracking down have, just in the last two weeks you're lucky to get five or six people watching off the facebook pages yeah i don't what? know if their notifications are getting turned off we found out from Steve Gardner talking it's a liberal piece on of YouTube it, right? that all of a sudden a lot of people are getting unsubscribed or unliked off yep. of a page. Yep. On YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rumble is doing great with us. So everybody, the best thing I can tell you is go to Rumble. Yep. Get you an account set up. Pretty easy. It doesn't take it's free. And look up Born TV on Rumble, and you will find all our shows. And if you can find shows, let us know. Let us know. Right. Contact me. Have... Contact Carl. Anybody. Right. Because that way we can find out. But <clears throat> everything goes right. Everybody that's got a Roku, I'm even thinking about going to the Fire Stick and all that. But Roku especially there after the first of the year you should be able to find our shows on the roku yeah and you know the thing about roku is is that it's not amazon amazon will muffle us as well right once right. they realize what born stands for we're screwed yeah they'll be we'll be all right but yeah. uh i mean Everything will work out good that way. We'll have another place because you look how many Roku smart TVs are out in everybody's houses right now. Oh, yeah. yeah they come with it. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so guys. Anyway, ours, ours I want to thank Thanks Network for letting us go live over there. The Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment Facebook page and Japan Paranormal. And everybody over on Rumble. And join me next Monday night at 7 p.m. Central on the Paranormal Pride here on the Born Network TV. Born, born uh, crap. The Bill of Rights Network. Check us out there on Rumble and Japan Paranormal. And if there's someplace else you think I need to go live at, let me know because I'm also live on LinkedIn. So if you can't find me, tell me and I'll tell you where to find me. So join me next and Monday night for the Haunted Housewives. Great deal. And no conservative view show tonight. Barbara's in a hurry to fix up her greenhouse out there. She sent me a message. <laughs> so everything got to get it warmed up. Right. The next show will be Saturday evening uh, with Mike Rage and Rage Nation. So check us out on the Bill of Rights Network for all the shows. And uh, we will see you next week here on Paranormal Nation Radio. Have a good evening, everybody.